What's up you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm coming back to you with another highly requested tutorial, which as you can see by the title is going to be a clothing tutorial. Drawing clothes is in fact quite complicated subject and you should be quite good in drawing human body first and knowing how human anatomy works to be able then to pull off a really good outfit on it. So if you're not that familiar with how the human body works and how to draw it, then maybe first of all you should see my body tutorial to get a better grasp of all the proportions and anatomy and then maybe you should continue on with watching this tutorial. But despite that, I really hope that in my today's tutorial I will be able to go in depth and show you how clothing works and how to draw it to make it look realistic and three-dimensional. So now without any further ado, let's jump right into today's tutorial. So we're going to start off with a basic t-shirt. On the first model, I draw an example of how not to draw it, presenting the most common mistakes I'm seeing when people are trying to draw clothes. So usually people tend to draw clothing forgetting that there's an actual human body underneath that and that the t-shirt is made of a soft and a rather stretchy fabric. So instead of a nicely fitted piece of clothing, some people would just draw it as a shape that is just put on the body like a random 2D object. It doesn't have any foldings and it doesn't give you the feeling of something soft and fabric-like. It's just there, it's like a layer on top of the body sketch. So what we should do to avoid those mistakes is first off realize that we're drawing soft things. It sounds stupid, but what I really mean is that both human body and the clothing are made of soft materials. So with that being said, we should avoid any harsh or straight lines. We should create an impression that the t-shirt we're drawing is kind of hugging the body. So in any possible place, we want to round up the edges or the foldings of the material. Everything should follow the natural body angles and curves. To make your t-shirt look more realistic, you want to add the foldings here and there, but mostly around the armpit area where the fabric would naturally fold. It's also good to add some foldings around the cleavage area and waist or hips if you're drawing a girl. Also remember that depending on the size of the breast of the girl you're drawing, the t-shirt would stretch out in the middle, so you also want to enhance that a little bit. So now that our t-shirt sketches are both done, let's just outline them and we can get into coloring. So the most common mistake I see when people are drawing clothing is that they color it with a stiff and straight up and down movement. And even though markers blend very nicely and you usually leave your surface pretty smooth and even, in this case coloring quite a big space will resolve in your t-shirt looking super flat, like literally zero shape. And then even if you add some shading in the most typical places like around the collar, armpits and around the edges of the t-shirt, it really won't help. The t-shirt will still look super flat. So to achieve a desired 3D-like coloring, we should first off try to color our t-shirt with marker strokes that will imitate and follow the curves of the body. It doesn't matter if you're working with a chisel tip or a brush tip, just try to follow the shape of the model you drew the clothing on. Once we have this base done, we can add a very simple shading with a darker marker. Here a brush tip would be preferred, but it's really not a must. You can do the exact same thing using the chisel tip or the point tip. So here with shading, we're sticking to the same rule. Rounded strokes that are following the curves of the body. We're also going to be enhancing those little foldings of the material to make it even more three-dimensional. At the end, we can come back to our base color and blend it all out to make it even more seamless. But with those few little steps and advices, you can really tell how huge the difference is between those two t-shirts. And the t-shirt on the right really didn't took me much longer than the t-shirt on the left. As the last step and this final touch, we can add some highlights with the color pencil. And here with such saturated color as red, you don't want to do white highlights because they will look too fake and artificial. That's why I'm taking a peach color pencil and I'm enhancing the most lightened places. A little bit around the neck and also on the foldings of the material. 
and we're pretty much done. So now to practice a little bit more, I'll sketch out a couple of more different types of tops. First, I'll do a long sleeve with a quite open neckline. So here, as you can tell, the pose is a slight three quarters view, so this is going to determine how our top is going to fold on the body. However, we're still sticking to a very simple rule of following natural body curves. One very easy trick is that with all of body tight clothing you should always pay attention to where the body curves are and then put some materials folding in this exact place. It will make the fabric look natural because in other places where there is not a lot of fabric foldings usually the material will be more stretched out and flat. So here I'm putting the foldings around the elbow area, around wrists, around the armpits, also under the bust and some around the neck. And also with such an open neckline you also want to mimic the curves of the body rather than drawing a stiff circle on the cleavage, so please just keep that in mind. And at the end I'm adding some little buttons to my top to finish up the design and I'm pretty much done. Next up, a little bit more girly number. This is the kind of top I love wearing myself because it hides your stomach area and you can pretty much eat as much as you want and it will always cover it up. But well, anyway, I'm starting off with shaping a V neckline. And of course some shoulder straps. For the bottom of this top, I'm sketching those kind of triangular sections to be my kind of frills later on. I don't want those sections to be the same size because it won't look natural, so I'm shaping them quite irregularly. The most important thing is to show that this is just the material folded because the whole top is made just of one piece fabric. I really hope that makes sense. And this design is quite complicated both to draw and to explain, so I really hope that you can see what I'm doing on the paper and follow along. And the last design will be a hoodie. I personally love hoodies, both wearing them and drawing them on my characters, so I couldn't resist on not showing you guys how to draw them. So hoodies are honestly quite difficult to draw because they are usually oversized and it's quite tricky to draw an oversized clothing in general without making it look like a potato sack. So what I do is usually I draw the shape of the hoodie about half a centimeter away from the body shape, but I still kind of want to follow the body shape, but at the same time I want to add those foldings of the hoodie all over it, but quite irregularly. Again, I really hope that makes sense. But honestly, if you want to draw a hoodie looking quite realistic, what I would really advise you to do is to use yourself as a model. Just put on your favorite hoodie, the one that you want to base your drawing off of, and then just take a picture of yourself in the pose that you want to draw later on, and then see how all the foldings are placed and where are the shadows and highlights, and well, just see how the hoodie looks in reality and try to mimic that on the paper. That's in my opinion the best way to draw clothing if you want to make them look realistic but maybe you're not advanced enough to come up with certain design from your imagination. Anyway, what is the most important thing while drawing a hoodie or any oversized item of clothing is to one more remember that there is an actual human body under that piece of clothing and just try to not make too many or too little foldings on this material and then you should be fine. This is how we're pretty much done with three different designs of three different tops. And now we're moving on to drawing pants. On the first model I draw the most simple type of pants, which will be leggings, but the way we're gonna draw them applies to any type of pants in fact. So what is crucial in this design is the folds of the material, again, in the places where your legs naturally bend. So around the knees, ankles and the crotch area. We're gonna draw those foldings of the material quite irregularly, like always, but again rounding them up and following the natural shapes of the body. And with those few folds, we're pretty much already done. It was super simple, wasn't it? Next design will be a little bit more complicated, because these are going to be sweatpants. We're gonna draw it similarly to how we drew hoodie, but without adding as much volume to the material. We're gonna go like 2 or 3 millimeters away from the body outline. And here, since we're also dealing with a 3 quarters pose, we need to remember about the directions the material would stretch towards. So for example, in the place where the leg is bent a little bit, we would have longer folds than usual. I really hope that makes sense. 
And since we're drawing sweatpants, I'm adding the details like stitching, waistband and the pockets. And lastly, we're going to try drawing jeans. We're starting off with doing the base, just like we would be drawing leggings. So we want to add some foldings around waist, crotch, knees and ankles. Then I'm also going to add the details to make those pants look like actual jeans. And once we're done and happy with our design, we're going to quickly move to outlining it with a black fine liner. And now on to coloring. I'll be using only two shades of blue. First, I'm coloring in the whole area with light denim blue color. Then I'm taking a slightly darker shade and I'm taking a brush marker and I'm gonna shade the jeans on the edges to make them pop a little bit more and to round up the whole design to make it look more three-dimensional. Then I'm blending the shading out with a lighter color again. I'm also adding the darker color into the foldings to make them look more natural. In the meantime, I'm also shading the jeans with a lighter and darker blue color pencils to give them a denim-like texture. I'm also using those pencils to enhance the shaded areas of the jeans. And then at the very end, I'm adding the distressed parts with white gel pen. And that's how we're pretty much done with three different types of pens. Alright, and that will be pretty much all for my today's clothing tutorial. I really hope this found it helpful and that some of the tips and tricks I told you today and I showed you will be useful in your future drawings. Also, please let me know in the comments which piece of clothing is the hardest one to draw in your opinion so maybe I will use your suggestions to make another in-depth tutorial on this certain topic in the future. So well, I'll be wrapping up for now. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed my today's video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave thumbs up under it and subscribe to my channel for more content. So well, once more, thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I can't wait to see you in my upcoming videos. Take care. Bye. I'm just going with the gut, never had a doubt, felt like this is just a must Put me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut, everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now